hours after Sisiko Ayutabe left the meeting. He wasn't reporting to me as a boss, but somebody who had advised him before. Okay. And he told me the truth of what actually transpired, which has been distorted deliberately to suit the agendas of particular groups. Welcome to this show. My name is Augustine Ambe. I have a very interesting show for you today. There's a lot of talk and opinionating going on both on social media and um, at the press in La Republic of Cameroon about a meeting that took place between the government of Cameroon and Ambazonian leaders, including the president, Seko Julius Ayok Tabe. Uh, all of them prisoners of the Cameroon government since they are adoption from Nigeria in uh, January 5th, 2018. The talks out there about the meeting range from denunciations from uh, within the ranks of the leadership itself about the meeting itself coming from Mr. Tassan Wilfred and total denial that a meeting ever took place from Mr. Rene Sadi, the, uh, the communication minister of La Republic du Cameroon. To explore what the facts are, why all the talk and matters arising from the talks, I'm joined by Barrister Harmony Boga Mbuton from Washington, D.C. to help us understand with what he knows, what his knowledge of the system and people of Cameroon in general leads him to think and just to hear him talk. It was by listening to lawyer Bobga on Cameroon television and, and reading about him and what he wrote and did as the president of the Southern Cameroon Bar Association, that led me to very quickly uh, conclude that the long-awaited day of reckoning between La Republic and Ambazonia was about to come to pass. It will not be an exaggeration to say, if there is one man who can be pointed to be the one who ignited the nightmare that La Republic faced, to his greatest surprise, but must face, it will be none other than Barrister Harmony Bobga Mbutan. Barrister, I want to welcome you to this show. And uh, like I already said, uh, you, I, I'm sure you've heard about the talk going on in, in, uh, in, in La Republic of Cameroon about one meeting or many meetings. And the first thing I'm going to ask you is, what have you heard about this talk and what do you know about it? Let's first hear what you know about the, 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 the talk, sir. You see, just focusing on the talk itself, it's an unfortunate construct. If I were to be in your position, mm -hmm. I would rather ask where are we with the Southern Cameroon Restorative Revolution? And in particular, what is the significance of the development in the last uh, couple of days between the government and the leadership of the Southern Cameroon uh, crusade for security of its identity articulated as a separate national identity from that of La Republic to Cameroon. 
Yes, we're going, uh, let, yeah, uh, let me say this, okay? We're going to come to all of that. What I just wanted to do, because we have to have an entry point, and the entry point that is playing out there right now is... is, 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 is this? Let me say this. Yes. Um, I have not just heard, like, everybody in a beer parlor. Okay. Uh, President Julius Ayuktabe who carries the title of uh, Seseku, yes. has known me and my pensions for a peaceful approach. I am resolutely against violence. And uh, he's always come back to me for advice. Okay. And I want, and I want to say that a few hours after he left the meeting that you know people have embraced in their own way that is people have different interpretations the likes and the dislikes and so on yes um in fact it has generated just another phase of unproductive debate within the Southern Cameroonians, within the Cameroon establishment, while the international community sits quiet, hoping that not only will they drift between the Africans widen, but amongst their clusters, like the people of the Republic of Cameroon and those of Southern Cameroon, there will be more internal division. Are you wait wait? I, let me see if I understand you. You're saying that the international community is hoping that there's division amongst us. They are not just hoping; they are fomenting it. They have bad faith because there is a conflict between the interest of Southern Cameroonians in particular for the accession of their right to self-determination articulated as independence, mm -hmm. which is grounded in law and history. But because of the interest of all the, in the, the members of this national, the Security Council, which has been repackaged into the necessity for energy security in the Gulf of Guinea, the epicenter of which is Southern Cameroon. The only way they can get their way through mm -hmm. that's a new colonial agenda is to ensure that not only Southern Cameroon and La Republic continue to knock their heads where they ought to have recognized law, history, and therefore give a chance to justice. You mean the international community ought to have recognized that? No. They ought to have recognized, they would have created an enabling environment for the conflictual parties to recognize that peace and justice based on law and history is a better cause than for them to be fighting. Then internally, there are fights within the Cameroon establishment already, mm -hmm. just as much as we have, you know, the elbowing and positioning amongst inept Southern Cameroonians mm -hmm. who neither understand the history, the law, or even the process of getting to a goal. In fact, most of the groups have fictitious goals that they are not working towards. They only use it for propaganda. Meanwhile, the ordinary people on Ground Zero are bleeding. They are dying. So here is my thing. Yes. Coming back to the recent events, a couple of hours after Siseko Ayutabe left the meeting, he wasn't reporting to me as a boss, but somebody who had advised him before 
Okay. And he told me the truth of what actually transpired, which has been distorted deliberately to suit the agendas of particular groups. Yeah, we're going to come to those agendas. What I really want you to do is just, is just first of all, tell the story, and then we can tell the different versions that are out there, right I mean, or wrong. This is, this is, this is not new. The, the story is simply that pre-talks were initiated mm -hmm. not by Sisiku Ayoktabe, not by the Cameroon establishment representatives. Mm -hmm. It was organized by the players in the international community, those of them who have diplomatic representation in Yaoundé. Is there, is there, can you name some of them for us? Well, you have the United States, you have France, you have the European Union. I'm not too sure whether cunning Britain was involved, but it should have been involved. And, of course, South Africa was involved. Was the... Okay, you did you didn't mention the U.S. Was the U.N. involved? I said the U.S. Uh, well, the, U, the U.N. definitely, you know, was somehow involved. You know, there's a major uh, U.N. Uh, center for human rights and democracy. Yes. And... The, 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 everything that is happening now in Cameroon, as well as, I mean, particularly in southern Cameroon, mm -hmm. has grave human rights implications. On the side of Cameroon, they have implications of democracy more. And it is hard to believe that they will not be part of it. But okay. I want to say with certainty from the report that I got from uh, President Sisiko Ayuktabe. Okay. Was the was the AU involved? Uh, that I'm not too sure, but I know that the Director of External Intelligence, something like a, the CIA, the mm -hmm. equivalent of the CIA in the uh, 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 Cameroon system, mm -hmm. was there. He's actually the one who went and brought Sisiko them from the prison. To the location where they had the meeting. There was the representative from the American Embassy, uh, Mbongo Ferdinand, the Secretary General in the presidency. Mm -hmm. He lied that he was in that meeting. He was not there. Was I, don't know, I don't know what the young man wanted to, to, to make out of it. And somehow, I understand that his little finger was twisted into correction and then he had to issue a corrective statement which Jean Afrique took up and published and stated exactly what transpired. Uh, was was uh, René Sadi there? I'm not too sure. Well, I'm asking him for, about him in particular because he came out and said there was no meeting that took place about anything of the sort. No, no. You see, uh, Sadi Rene is not different from, you know. Is is that Chiroma? They 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 are not different from clownish uh, journalists of the Cartier who pose and want to please their employer. In fact, I don't think Sadi Rene thinks. What he does is he takes instruction. You know that the Cameroon system is an absolute monarchy. So anything that happens anywhere is cleared from the presidency. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand why such a high-level meeting that you are describing took place and then the Minister of Communication of La Republique comes out and says it did not happen. Maybe, maybe he did not know because he wasn't there. You cannot confirm that he was there. So maybe he, he's no, actually... I, I, I I didn't. I was not. I, I'm not the boss of Sisiko Ayotabe. So, with the little time that I had to be able to talk, I could not be getting into too many details. But one thing stands out clear: the young man Gongo Ferdinand was not in that meeting. 
Okay. One okay. other thing I can tell you is that the Prime Minister John Gute was in his office till about nine of nine PM in the night. Waiting to Wait, waiting to know because he was deceived that Gongo was in the meeting through the news that was spilling uh, spilling out. But the representative from the Prime Minister's office went back and gave him a report that he was not there. So, Barista, let me ask you a very quick question. Why do you think the gov if <laughs> excuse me, if Rene Sadi is representing the voice of the government of Cameroon, why why are they saying uh, this meeting didn't take place? What what is the motivation? I mean, I don't understand. Can you speak? See, I, I don't think you know, but can you speculate on it, let please? Let me tell you. Yes. It, it, I don't need to be. You don't need to be a record scientist in uh, political science, international political economy, to know how this country's function. You know that Cameroon can be reduced to a subdivision in France. And France is so evil, so pretentious, that they may even show a face that they want to work together with the other people for peace. Meanwhile, they are there to make sure that they dig holes into whatever walls, protecting walls are being built. Apparently, which is something that has repeated itself over the years, yes. France simply told them, issue an authoritative statement from the Minister of Communication that no meeting ever took place. Because the reality is that Siseko gave them raw they addressed Siseko and his team as separatists. And he called them to order at the very beginning. This is what he told me. He said, if you continue to call us separatists, this meeting is ending right off. We are not separatists. You had your independence on the 1st of January, 1960. We had our own on the 1st of October, 1961. Show me the part of La Republic of Cameroon independent as of January 1, 1960, that we are seceding from that you're calling us secessionist. They apologize and the meeting went on dealing with Siseko and that is a major point that is called. As a leader of a movement for the restoration of a compromised or suppressed independence. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. What I am telling you is that it is like somebody by the seaside in Victoria. You see the waves. You cannot determine from those waves the depth of the sea at any particular point. There are undercurrents, the tectonics there, where the US, France, Russia, Britain, they are scrambling for the resources in our subsoil. Why the bubbles represent the foolishness of our people who are not able to identify these foreign interests as the primary enemy to the peace and security and justice in that area. Uh, Baris, uh, let me. I, I want to. I want to just stay around the the the, uh, the meeting for for a little moment here. What is motivating all these powers that you mentioned that are behind this these talk? What do you think is motivating them? If yeah, what do you think is motivating them? Black lives don't matter. It is you. You, you can only understand what is motivating them and what is killing us if you put your finger on international political economy yes. where we don't count our resources count more than us and not for us but for the harvesters so is there a new recognition that we count that is making them say okay let's let, please stop the killing now I, I, at least okay. I, I think that's where they're driving the to is that the resistance from southern Cameroon has taken the entire world off guard. They, Bia and all his supporters from abroad, they thought that that was going to be a fortnight business. But now they are running again.
game, which is long enough. They are bleeding. Foreign companies that had signed contracts with the government, some of them are withdrawing. Yes. In fact, the whole business of uh, the Swiss stocks, which has failed woefully, and that's why they are now coming up with another scheme. And this is not the first time this is being done. In the case of South Africa, the multinationals said enough is enough. You people cannot continue to fight because we are losing money. They went to the European Union and organized what they called at the time European Parliamentarians for South Africa. That is exactly the same thing that they have done. They are hiding behind the shield of COVID-19 to organize a few interest groups to come there as people who are interested in our peace, our health, as if those have just arisen. I was going to point out to you about a week before this meeting mm -hmm. unbeknownst to me Patrice Ganon called me frantically and said somebody wanted to talk to me somebody wanted to talk I said who is that? It was a journalist from uh, Radio Deutsche Welle Okay And when a gentleman called me throughout our discussion I was cautioning him not to address us as separatists. He went even to the extent of asking me to give the phone numbers of the self-defense forces. And I said, I am non-violent. I don't know any of those boys. But I want to tell you that if there is peace, I can walk the streets and the trenches in southern Cameroon and talk to the people, to the people because... For 33 years, I built a reputation of identifying with the downtrodden through my human rights pro bono activism. Yes. And I said, peace is easy to come by. Let me cite you one example. When we organized the conference of common law lawyers in 2015, I had a trajectory. And this is not being arrogant because the conception, the articulation of that conference, I presented a keynote address. The resolutions there are essentially a summary of that keynote address. Okay. One of the things that we recommended was that we're giving the government six months within which to respond to the lawyers. Even though we couch it as a lawyer's thing, we saw that as a window by which we could activate a general outcry against the treatment that the entire Southern Cameroon had been going through. That is why when I went to Canal de International in Douala in a debate, I told them, <laughs> we are still asking you to go back to the experimentation with federalism which in fact had no legal basis mm -hmm. but that because we have you know, you people have squeezed us and we have been interested, let's go back to that stage so that you can recall certain things, because Ahijo is dead Foncha is dead let's go as far as we can go and recall and start picking the pieces they rejected it, and I told them, you are rejecting what I am suggesting. We are not going to ask for federalism anymore. We are going to ask for restoration. It is on record. No, I remember that meeting. That's a meeting that I've actually, that's a television show that I'm actually referencing in my introduction. That, see, that made me, I, yeah, please I, continue. I want to tell you. Yes. When I left that place, I made up my mind. I filed a petition before the Constitutional Council of La Republic du Cameroon, because de facto, they are in occupation of our territory. And if you want to seek your rights, whether it is soldiers or administrators, you seek those rights from the prevalent authority. That 
that is pragmatism. But to this date, that petition has not even been as much as been enrolled to be set for hearing since 2016, July 2016. And that was going to give a perfect, cheap, easy solution. Because the question I ask is, show us, the lawyers, the act of union that brought the Republic of Cameroon and the Southern Cameroon into a union. Absent that act of union, you are illegal in Southern Cameroon, and you cannot make laws called or harder and impose them on us. Well, Barrister, I think that I think that they, they cannot. I mean, I'm, I'm reiterating this because these are exactly the the, 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 the grounds on which Sisuko Ayo Tabe has been talking. And I want to remind you, I think we had a chat about this some years back, about two years back. Yes, I remember that. The eve of the first conclave, Sisiko asked me, Nibobga, that's how he calls me, Nibobga, supposing somebody like the United Nations or African Union throws it on our laps that we want to talk peace, what do we talk? That's an honest man. He does not claim that he knows everything. That is why he is reaching out to everybody. And I sat up, dropped myself with five cups of coffee. And I prepared an outline for peace talks, stage mm. by stage, and exactly what had to be done. And I gave him. He has a photographic brain. Even though they arrested him, the exact terms of those that document, they are on his mind, and he uses them. The unfortunate thing is that hackers of the revolution, they are interested in positioning themselves, and they don't even know who wants to be a civil servant. I think even Sisiko is somebody who came into leadership as a compromise of the fight that erupted at the first conclave between the people who wanted to be on top at all costs. Uh, Barrister, I don't want us to, let me say this, I don't want us to go and talk about people who are irrelevant because I think you made it very clear in this conversation that it is the Amber Boys or the our freedom fighters on the ground that are forcing this international community to now come and talk. No, look, look, look. I come from a farming community. Yes. When you plant good corn with which they make balifufu, if elephant grass enters that uh, is growing in that farm, you don't dismiss it as it does not produce corn. It is irrelevant. No. You have to uproot it and dry it like we did at APNC. Well, um, let, me, let me say this, okay? Can I interject a little bit? Well, I agree with you that it, with the time slot that we have, we don't need to discuss those because in the context, they are irrelevant. Now we are focusing on was it right or wrong for Sisiko to open up upon invitation by these facilitators? I'm not even asking that question yet. I just want to go back to your analogy of the uh, elephant grass growing among the Kokoyam, okay? I, the, I, it, when you talk about the Kukoyam farm, it's in the territory. No, no, corn, corn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, when you talk about the corn, I can tell you this, that uh, the corn is grown in the territory. All these people, you and that's why I wanted us to just forget about them. They're all hanging in the peripheries in the foreign countries, and, and they, they don't even, they don't, they have no relevance to the struggle right now, except... There you are very correct, and yes. short of the fact that I don't want to get involved with anything that has to do with blood. But my advice generally has been that including myself, I have no right beyond being an advisor to the people who are taking, bearing the brunt on ground zero to be pontificating about this revolution.
solution. Anybody who wants to do it should go there. Some people say that, oh, people don't negotiate from prison. Sisiko Ayuk Tabe and his team, they are closer to the furnace and taking the heat. Somebody cannot stay in an air-conditioned house in Washington here and be talking nonsense. No, the, sad thing is, the, the sad thing is this. Some of them even have, you know, some uh, cartoon certificates that when you have no content, you put them on the table and ask them what is conflict? What is conflict resolution? What is conflict transformation? They have no clue. Yes. They have no clue. Uh, uh, barrister, uh, again, again, these these people are so irrelevant that I don't want you to spend your re your your good time. I think we can make a show just to talk about those, and I think that people who have come no, to this show now, they there, there is there is there is a connection because some of our people you you don't you don't know you know how much people watch Esteem TV. They believe in you, right? Yes. In like manner. Some people have marketed themselves and like it is said in the Bible, my people suffer from lack of knowledge. They don't know what you and I know. Uh, you know, Barrister, having said that, I think I think you are correct. Can you clarify? And, and you, you talked about people having cartoon uh, certificates. Can you, I, I'll, I'll give you a little time to, to expand on that because yes, these people have followers and they are misleading our people. For the, for the reason that you just said, that they don't know what you and I know. No, what, what I'm saying is that anybody who goes to school should be able to deliver. Right? Yes. And even those who have not gone to school, if you are honest and you have, a, you have human feeling, you should be able to do things in a way that people will recognize that you care about them. What is all this thing? Like, every now and then, we are going to have, beyond Country Sunday, we are going to have five days lockdown. We are going to have three days lockdown. Who is being tortured? The population that we seek to, 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 to fight for? Yes, it is. It is, <laughs> it is people trying there are to... Other methods. Yes. There are other methods. I, I think... Know? I think it's people trying to, to be relevant. When, when the Swiss, when the Swiss, who are the bankers of the thieves from Africa, they throw a bet, you put your money. I personally interviewed the, 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 the officer in humanitarian dialogue who was handling that fire. I gave him a series of questions to answer. He could not. Okay, can we get an example, sir? I asked him, before you get into resolving a conflict, you identify the parties to the conflict. The Republic of Cameroon has said there is no conflict. There's just uh, some internal issues that they are taking care of, which means that they don't recognize the other party. So how, what conflict is there you are resolving? Different from the case theory of La Republic that thinks that some people are just disturbing. They didn't give me an answer. No. I asked them, who is financing this? They told me that France had offered to finance those peace talks. What a joke. France sponsoring and then they said they rejected it and collected it from Canada. When uh, 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 the French will go to Canada and say, Vive le Quebec, is Canada itself well? That's a constitutional monarchy. I mean, it's under the rule of the Queen. And the, 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 the British government is the most, it is the number one enemy of Southern Cameroon because they traded us off. So, I, the, my, look, it, it's difficult to, to, to say this thing better than saying that Southern Cameroonians need to take a little, I mean, each, each person needs to take a seat.
and study this conflict and identify who are the enemies of southern Cameroon. You may not be able to fight them because you don't have the firepower, but we got brains. You can use your brain and know how to dribble them. Now, all of them are interested in energy security, but there cannot be peace to give the chance to energy security from the Gulf of Guinea. So you have a bargain that give us our right to self-determination and let us be free people to negotiate how you harvest energy from the Gulf of Guinea and particularly the epicenter of the Gulf of Guinea, which I have identified as Southern Cameroon, you will not get anywhere because as you talk, the multinationals will never talk with you. They are discussing with the, their governments and the government doesn't even need to look for money. The multinationals will supply the money. We have mercenaries from various countries. It's a whole war economy. Even the, 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 the people who are fighting from La Republic to Cameroon, they are enriching themselves. So we need to stop this and think, remember that we are Africans and we have been exploited for long enough. Let La Republic know that Southern Cameroonians are Pan-Africanists, but Pan-Africanists on the theory that you recognize my own national identity and respect it as I will recognize your own and respect you. Uh, as Lid Molan Jolly Tumbe put it very graphically to the, the, the unschooled, you might not be married. A one of date with even a subterfuge facilitator does not make a marriage. So we're not even talking of breaking. Uh, uh, Barrister, let me ask you a very quick question, okay? I want to go back to uh, to to these to to, to, to these talks and, and the and the motivations. And I, again, I don't. I, I just want you to speculate. What do you think is more? What is motivate? What is motivating? And this this is about the second or third time I'm asking this question. Yes. What do you think at this moment? And I know you did say the Amber Boys or the or, or the resistance of the Amazonian people is what is making them think twice. But then you, you, but then you also sound as though they're not serious, and I can already show tell you that La Republic doesn't sound serious. There you are making a mistake. Okay, please correct me. The I don't talk about Amber Boys. I just want to tell you that the Southern Cameroonians are resolute because. You can never balance the equation by moving back. The people that have been killed. When I heard, you know, um, uh, people like uh, Professor Kanto saying that they are going to rebuild, rebuild what? Now they have sent some. Uh, I don't. Say, I don't want to say that they have sent them. They have just forced the mayor, the, the mayor of uh, Kumbo and uh, Paul Tasson, whether he's minister without portfolio, that they are going to work on reconstruction. Who has first of all done the assessment, the evaluation of the damage that has been caused? Because you do reconstruction upon the data you have collected of the destruction. No, but why are you even going back there? Who has said that we want reconstruction? We don't want them. We just want them out of our land and we'll reconstruct our own land. We are dealing with their smoke screen. We want to clear their smoke screen. Okay. Let nobody think that we are deceived. But again, you have to know that the house of the Cameroon establishment has never been visited by confusion as it is at this moment. Everybody in that Cameroon establishment is on the edge because nobody knows what the second, the next second will produce for them as a group or as individuals. So, one of the reasons I would think from the way that I've known them to operate, so coming to this uh, pre-talks facilitated,
agitated by international interests is to divert attention from their crumbling house. Yes. Because there is no way that house can stand. Yes, and I wanted to just mention something about the, the crumbling house. I think uh, there was a there was a there was a, a Zoom meeting last week with a with a with a Canadian international relations expert who said that La Republic is next to collapse in a week if some of the partners who are still holding the string for them just let go. And then shortly after that, I got a uh, there's a company called um, uh, Victoria Oil. Yes. Who uh, who just uh, Cut them off. Uh, I think that 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 came out yesterday, because La Republic is fa did not pay its bills, or some of the the, the interest that they were working with in, in La Republic cannot pay their bills, so then cut them off. So it is, it is very clear that La Republic is uh, is struggling right now. So what I wanted to really do, if I were look look, it's it's uh, when when you start talking, it's hard for me to stop you because every word you say is important in our struggle. Not not only because you are so you're very interested in it, but also because of the knowledge that you have. So whenever I have you on, I'm very, I, I, I value every single word you say. Uh, but, 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 but we know that the international community, what I really wanted you to say is, is the international community there now because they are fed up and want to make the place, uh, want, want to bring justice and want the Ambazonian people to have their, 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 their territory back? Because it seems to me it doesn't seem to me. I am very certain that until the people of Ambazonia are free in that land, nobody can take anything out of it. And I think that the international let, community let, is let seeing me, that. Let me, let, me, let, let me tell you something. Yes. There is a gentleman, I will not quote his name. He published a book, which I have read. Mm -hmm. Foreign Interest in the Decolonization of Southern Cameroon. That book is pregnant with information. How much have you heard the international community talking about Kofi Annan after his transition? I haven't heard very much. Good. Because my inference is that he is faulted for having pulled a fast one on Bia. You know, the Cameroon land and maritime boundary case mm -hmm. is one of the biggest frauds that has ever been perpetrated in the International Court of Justice. Okay. Explain, sir. They used it, France used it, to, you know, cement the mischief they have perpetrated on us. The, the Kanto man that you see there, his background is political science. They, they like to call it a drug public, public law. He's a political scientist. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure he's a member of the Cameroon Bar, but, you know, he's a house slave even to the bar in Paris because I think he's a member of one of those bars they are the ones who went and concocted and as the case was going up and I happen to have been in Abuja with uh, the SCNC and SCAPO mm -hmm. I downloaded their submissions and their the, 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 their pleadings they developed a case theory that Bakasi belongs to the Republic of Cameroon because it is actually in Southern Cameroon and Southern Cameroon had joined La Republic du Cameroon and become part and parcel of La Republic du Cameroon. That theory did not fly then, is not flying now and can never fly because they cannot justify it. But through bribery and corruption, they came out with a judgment. And you know, when you buy a judgment, you cannot implement it. That's my experience as a practitioner for 33 years. When you buy a judgment, people who go and buy judgment, they cannot enjoy the fruits of that judgment. That is why they came up with a green tree agreement. And to this day, I 
as we speak. The Green Tree Agreement, the document proper, remains a secret. What do you think? What do you think is in there? We understand the vibes that we had mm -hmm. was that Kofi Annan met these leaders in Switzerland. Switzerland after again. The, after the Green, green Tree Agreement, that's Obasanjo and Dia. Mm -hmm. But they did not sign the peace agreement, the post judgment peace agreement. Because in spite of the judgment of the International Court of Justice, the fighting was going on. So Kofi Annan came and to make peace. And in that agreement, we understand, subject to when we see the document, if it is not doctored, that one of the clauses said the Republic of Cameroon and Nigeria must I mean, they agreed to withdraw to their boundaries that they had at independence. Automatically, the boundary of La Republic du Cameroon is that of 1st January 1960, and that of Nigeria is 1st October 1960. And if they respect those international boundaries, the entire territory of southern Cameroon not even by the dust that is raised on the hills constitutes part of either the Republic of Cameroon or Nigeria. And the independence of that territory called Southern Cameroon becomes consequential on the Green Tree Agreement. That is why it is not out. Sometimes I even fear that there might have been foul play in the transition of Kofi Annan because of that fire. Well, Barrister, you know, I know that as a lawyer, you are very, very interested in these legalities and and want them to take place. And I know that when you come to to negotiations, they'll become important. But 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 I see force being the ultimate decider of what happens or doesn't happen. And I think the Ambazonian people have decided to revolt. After 57, 58 years of playing that game. So it seems to me that, that what you're saying is important because there was, the, the argument always, always has to come because we are thinking human beings. So the, argue, the argument will always, have, always need to be there. But it seems to me that the Amber Boys have said we are not going to, it's, it's do or die because we have waited on the law and never came. Because, you know, we talk about white supremacists right now, right? Yep. The, the whole world is talking about white supremacists right now, and, and in the United States, they're knocking down statues and everything. And so it is, it is a rebellion. It, it is a rebellion of the masses. Otherwise, who gives the British to come? I, you know, we, we all, I think our argument right now should be that all these boundaries and all these international cooked agreements between Europeans, between white supremacists, to come and destroy us in Africa, we should forget about them. And I think Ambazonians are doing the right thing in, in saying, you know what, we are human beings, we can live, and we, we are the only variable in this land, and right now we are going to make this land our land. And, and I, was, I was hoping that you would say that th these talks now, it's, it's a recognition of that. And that from, from here, they're going to move it forward, and we'll become... Uh, East Timor or become Southern Sudan and the solutions will start falling in place. But it doesn't no, seem like you believe that. No, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I am gratified in my position against violence because if you ask the Indians, the Indian War of Independence in number and quality never outmatched the resistance of Mahatma Gandhi. The approach of Nelson Mandela, as people say that you cannot negotiate from prison, I am 
have listened to the story of Nelson Mandela raw, even from his guard in Robin Island, which I visited thrice. I slept in Breakwater Prison, which is now a hotel. But that is the first place when they removed Mandela from Robin Island, they took him to Breakwater Prison. From Breakwater Prison, they moved him to a cottage. And it is from the cottage that he emerged. These things you see being done today, the pre-talks, that is almost a similar trajectory to what happened with Mandela. And Mandela, who was condemned as a terrorist and what have you, when the Europeans feared the danger of their investments in the mines in South Africa, and they succumbed to the resistance. Here I'm emphasizing that the self-defense resistance is a legitimate cause recognized in the UN human rights standards. But attacking is a violation of international humanitarian law, like Ngabu. So I am not negating what our people are standing up for. Because there is no country like Israel, like France, like China, which has been supplying arms and other war equipments to the Republic of Cameroon that can show me one arm that they have supplied to the Amber Boys. There's none. And in, 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 as far as arms sales are concerned, you do not send arms from a, sell arms from a country to any group without clearing with the government. In fact, when Fode Sanko was uh, uh, leading the, 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 the war in uh, uh, Sierra Leone, while the, French, the, the British government was pretending to be supporting the uh, Sierra Leonean gov nationalist government, the gave clearance to the, 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 the companies that were supplying for the sanko. So oh, to, wait, wait, wait. I, to continue supplying uh, to continue supplying them the arms. Yes, so that the Africans should kill themselves more. Then they will come afterwards, as they are coming now, to say they want to make peace and then build friendship. So whether it is in Southern Cameroon or in La Republic of Cameroon, they will now cut deals. Let me tell you. The British ambassador, after they gave me a scholarship to go to Nottingham, when I came back, they told me in plain, simple language, we were hoping that you will accept to be a minister someday and be a facilitator and protector of British interests in Cameroon. And I told him that's not what I was looking for. I said, I, I, I think I will, I'm not cut to becoming a minister. I don't want it. If you think you want to work with me, I hear you talk a lot about human rights. Give me another scholarship, then we go and do a PhD and come and raise a human rights army that will assure the sustainable establishment of a human rights and democratic culture in Cameroon. Uh, yes. And I want to caution you when you say that, oh, we just forget about them. The Germans always talk of real politics. You may have your own leanings, but when the chips are down, you make rational choices based on what is in your hand. If we do not recognize that the people in the Security Council are not just ordinary members of the United Nations with privileges, they are members of a club that protect one another. America is not going to go 100% against France because they want to support Southern Cameroon. So we must be able to use our wits and make them understand that they need to stop draining their energies and compromise with us. But if we go in dispersed ranks, running our mouths like 
chickens that don't have a head. We will die without being shot. Uh, Barista, thank you. Let me let me uh, let me say this, okay? Yes. Um, this is how I see these things. You know, like what you just talked about, the British sponsoring you and hoping that you come and defend their interests in uh, in Ambazonia or in Cameroon. That was a bad investment for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, but they tried. They tried to represent their interests. I think, I think this is where I'm looking at a struggle. I think the Ambazonian people for the longest time were naive. They believed in, in, in the rule of law. They believed in, in people having goodwill. And they realized that the world doesn't run that way. The world runs exactly how you're describing. People pursue their interests. And they've decided that they are now going to pursue their interests and they're going to do it by force. And for, for the past three years, there's been a lot of sacrifice. And I can tell you why there is that sacrifice. It's because they have been hit right to the bone. Almost every single Ambazonian has a pain, including, including the, the, the ministers who are selling their soul to La Republique. In fact, they are not selling to their soul to La Republique because they are, they are selling their soul to France. Because uh, like, uh, there's a, there's a, like we've seen in the, in, the, in the Israelis guarding La Republique, that it's a one-man country, and Bia has gone and hired these mercenaries to protect himself in, 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 in the land that is allowed to be explored by La Republic. Who, he's not protecting himself uh, from, from, from the French. He's protecting himself from the people of La Republic that he has sold for his personal well-being. And, and he doesn't trust them to make them his security guards. So he goes and hire mercenaries who and pay them exorbitantly who are able to come to, to LA and purchase property for 20 million and pay cash. And then go to... to to, uh, to New York, purchase an apartment there for 12 million and pay cash, and then go to the Caribbean and, 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 um, and, and live in, in mansions which cost $20,000 a night. So, so it seems to me that Ambazonians have come to a point where they've said... You are an American citizen of Cameroonian extraction, of uh, Southern Cameroon extraction. If you were to buy property like that in New York, will you not be investigated by FBI? Well, you would be. Okay, if the Israeli can come and buy it and it does not raise any dust, does that point to something for you? Well, it does, but that's but what I want us to concentrate on is what the Ambazonian people are doing. I, 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 there's another thing I want to say, and 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 and, I'm, and I'm, I, I give you a lot of room to talk about 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 uh, the elephant grass that is trying to destroy the corn. And I was trying to say this elephant grass is not important because it's growing in the peripheries. They're hanging in Washington and hanging in, in Europe. So they, they are not important. But it seems to me that each of their utterances and, and some of the garbage that they talk about is carrying a lot of airwaves. And I just wanted us to kind of shift from, the, from, 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 from wasting our time on them because they're irrelevant. And I think that once they're not only irrelevant to, to the struggle because these, these international players that, talk, that you're talking about, they ultimately know that they need to go and talk to Seseko Ayoktabe, and that's who they're talking to. If they thought these, these elephant grass that are in the periphery were important, they'll be talking to them. But they know that they're not important. So I wanted, I wanted the, the way I wanted to address some of that is to, is to have you address what you think about Tassang's take and his whole behavior in this whole talk thing. What, what do you think about Tassang? You see, when I joined the legal profession, I saw it the way I was taught in Nigerian law school, the way I interacted with uh, uh, British uh, barristers and solicitors, and I was told the profession is this way or that way. My aspirations were that maybe after I practiced for 20, 25 years, as the language describes it, I would be elevated to the higher bench. That's become a court of appeal or Supreme Court judge or even a judge of one of the international organizations like my classmate who is the president of uh, uh, of the International Criminal Court. This is my classmate from Calabar and Law School. So what I'm telling you here is that those things uh, what we hear but we must not just transpose
expose them and think that they will be operative in our own place, especially when there is an international conspiracy against us rising. Let me tell you, all these people who are making noise, they are known, and don't quote me wrong, they are encouraged in their distractions. So it's, part of, so it's part of the sabotage. Yes, it's part of the sabotage. So they are going to uh, Sisiku Ayuktabe and they make sure that such a pre-talk that ought to have been confidential and only brought back in the briefing by the participants is vulgarized before even it starts. And what does that do? It deepens the divide within our ranks. My advice to Southern Cameroonians, especially the young people, because we are facing out, is that in every grouping they should hold leadership to the highest level of performance and accountability. For example, when they heard that Sisiko Ayuktabe and others had been invited, the thing that people would have done would have been to key in on his disposition to reach out to all and sundry. And then they build a solid team, even a team to be making noise while a technical team is there to do the scientific work. But this is not what is being done. Everybody claims that he has the ultimate solution. And in fact, if you like, we have so many presidents go and take their uh, presidential speeches or policy speeches and you look at them. Read them. Study them. They are not worth the statements of a village chief. I'm sorry to say this. The reason is because knowledgeable they may be, but they engage in propaganda rather than facing the substance of our struggle. Uh, Barista, it seems to me that because I asked you a question about Tassang, it seems to me no, that you... No, no, I told you, I told you up front that I don't like to be judging individuals. Tassang is entitled to his opinion and his conduct in every situation. When you will be a free man and all of us will sit down, it has happened in other places. In South Africa, there was a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. People will have to talk and say the truth. It is Even if they, they are not giving an account to somebody, when it will be analyzed in a more democratic and free setting, you will know who demonstrated leadership and who did not demonstrate leadership. When the, the Caucasians ganked up in Washington here against Obama, he still managed to zip his mouth, but continue to serve the Americans. That's why there's a book published, a leader from the background, describing him. And even though they pushed him to the background, he continued to lead. Because his ideas were more latent than those who wanted to accept him in the White House. Um. I, cannot, I cannot stop at any point when insisting that from a generational perspective, from differential platforms, gender-wise, the, 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 the ammunition we need most at this critical time is nothing less than unity. Because absent a unity of process, the unity of purpose evaporates. 
Um, Barrister, you know you have always preached unity. I think what, what I'm trying to have you do is, 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 is deal with the situation now as given because uh, Tassang is siding with people who have embezzled money from the struggle. And I would, and I would, I was hoping that you would actually have to pass a judgment about 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 Tatsang, who is sitting in jail as one of our leaders, but is asking the international community that knows better that they should go and talk to an embezzler sitting in Washington D.C. Somebody who are, who who I think you're referring to a group you're referring to that they have cartoon education. I you know in this struggle there are people dying and I'm I don't believe in 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 um in a, and I'm not challenging what you said. I don't I you, 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 you know you know you know my dear brother you can say these things and go scot free. But beyond the borders of southern cameroon and the republic of cameroon at least i'm credited with having gone to school as a lawyer how do i sit and pass judgment on an individual or a group when i am not a court if it is a question of giving an opinion that's what i'm looking for that's what i'm looking that's all i'm looking for opinion is already presented and encapsulated in when I say that we need to be united that's automatically an indictment of somebody who wants that everything should happen only when he is the leader C can I say what can I say something barrister right. I, do, I do not believe that Tassang believes in unity because unity also involves legality and if if the facts of our struggle are laid out plain Tassan will be found very wanting and so there's this there's, there's a game Tassan is playing and i think that he should be called out because we need to we need to shift that in kindes we need to weed the cornfield of the elephant grass so that the, the corn can grow and we move forward if we allow them let me let me just finish this statement please let me just say this if we allow them to continue uh uh, to, to interject themselves and, and do some of what you, you say they're trying to do as part of the sabotage and not called out, then our people don't know, they don't know what's right and what is wrong. And I'm having a problem with that because you, you have, some, you, I mean, you definitely have a problem with that, but I'm saying that it will not add up if I go out there to chastise whether Sisiko or Tassan, and as an elder, if I say that it is not necessary to critique destructively the disposition of Sisiko, I should apply that to Tassan. Let Tassan destroy himself. Let not another Southern Cameroonian destroy him because he's educated. He knows the difference between black and white. If he clings to propaganda, Sooner or later, he will realize that the water has gone and left him. And I and I do believe in that. But let me say let me say something. Okay, having lived in the West for for the majority of my life, actually, what I've seen, especially in America, is that the right and the wrong are called out explicitly. Uh, it's, it's 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 only among us that we we try we tend to leave them so. And, and you see that the people we are competing with in the West, they, 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 they clarify their community and clean it up very well. They, they, they're very, very easy to separate right and wrong and bury the wrong and, and promote the good. And that's why they can compete against us effectively. And I think that we handicap ourselves when we carry garbage along with us and, and give them breathing space within us. That is some of what I'm trying to talk about. Well, it is very easy to compare our own community with this community. In fact, I joked with, uh, with an in-law who is a European sometimes that 
Africa has never been as primitive as Europe has been. So what you are even glorifying here that they are calling out? How can you explain when somebody wins the popular vote but the electoral college still makes the person who is unable to win in the popular vote to be president? No, I'm not even talking of politics because politics is one of the most garbage places where you can go there to find sanity, okay? I'm talking... I'm, let, 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 me, let, me, let me just hold it there. It's very easy to dismiss politics and so on. Even in your bedroom with your wife, you are playing politics. Because when you want something, you know that it is not only about Donald Trump that you will talk about quid pro quo. If you want to please somebody and you want the person to please you, there's what you sacrifice and it's what that person sacrifices. But the thing is, there is a system of law. The investigations about Russia that was carried out here, is that the thing you want to carry to Southern Cameroon? Definitely not. So it, it, this is not a perfect society, come to talk, to think about it. It's not a perfect society. We, 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 must, we must be able to know that while we admire some of the values here, it is not like we just collect it without being selective. Look at the way the COVID-19 has ravaged the United States. Next door in, uh, in, 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 in Jamaica, only 500 people were infected. I think out of those 500, only 200 went to hospital or so. And only four, I mean, five people have died. Can you beat that? Those people don't have the resources. But, you know, Barista, let me ask you this. Where do you, how do you see our struggle proceeding? Our struggle is following a trajectory of the Israelites being liberated from Egypt. We have crossed the Red Sea. It's a no return journey. But if we do not come together and pursue the remaining part of the struggle, as one man, we will wander in the desert and take 10 times the time that is required for us to get home before we actually get home. All right. This is why I am inviting the younger generation to educate themselves because material is abundant for the truth. They should educate themselves properly and know the kind of questions to ask their leadership to hold them accountable and performant. Okay, let me let me put the question in a different way, okay? Then the older generation should know that they have a duty they have a duty to deliver. And if you cannot deliver, step aside and be an advisor and a genuine advisor, a proper advisor to the younger people who have the energy. Okay, let me let me give you a scenario, okay? And see yeah. and, and, and just I, I just want to throw this at you. Let's assume that they not that we are not gonna to come together because some people this struggle is their, is their lifeline. Because these were people who were jobless, now they have a job. These were people who had, no, who had no money, now they have money. So there is, you know, survival begins with the individual survival before you even go to the family and the tribe. You know what I'm saying? So, so given that, I'm trying to see what your advice is, given that that is our situation right now. We're not going to come together. I don't think there's any of that happening right now. So advise us on how to proceed. I had spoken not only to Ayoktabe's group but to a couple of other groups when they approached me because uh, I, I really actually don't want to belong to any uh, group so to speak except the, the indigenous peoples of southern Cameroon that 
those who conceived it prevailed on me to be their chair. It's a very restrictive group. And the idea was that if they spring it on us, if they throw it on us that we should have a referendum, we will insist that even with the talk of dual nationality, only people whose parents are indigenous of southern Cameroons or those who were born in southern Cameroon by parents who are not southern Cameroonian, indigenous to southern Cameroon tribes, but who have irrevocably committed to uphold allegiance to southern Cameroon will be able to vote. Okay. There will be no game about it. All right, Barrister. I um... but, but, but let me let me clear let me let me clear this. Okay. Let me clear this. I can assure you the so called groups that you think are active. I'm not looking at those groups. You remember when I came here, I said that we should go from city to city and build a pyramidal structure of support for the struggle. Everybody sits and he has 10, 15 people and appoints them chairman, this and that. And then they use the social media to make themselves look like a million times all the Indian tribes put together so that even the Europeans cannot walk around here. What I'm advising is this. Those reasonable people in society, because if you are not in power and you are not in ground zero, you have a level head somehow to reason. You should be able to give thought and organize yourself. You just told me how uh, a group was hijacked like Panama used to attack the, the, the thing they call Panama that used to attack oranges in the Northwest. You prune it and the group is pure and the reasoning is being purified. It did not take bringing those pseudo leaders to reason, but by holding them accountable. This is what we need to do. I was pleasantly surprised but elated when i listened to my good friend dr munzu on equinox radio one day venting against the grand national dialogue and saying what was said by some of us before that dialogue that special status does not mean anything he has now come to terms with it. If more and more people were to come to terms with the truth and galvanize our people to stand up as one man, and one man does not mean any pseudo leader standing with his pair, but the people who have the power saying we want results, we need to come together. And we want people who are knowledgeable and skillful. I know a group of doctors, Southern Cameroonian doctors in this United States, as soon as COVID-19 kicked in, they went into research and started making programs of telemedicine. That's the kind of thing we need to encourage. That is what I have been talking to some of my colleagues about the Southern Cameroon Bar Foundation, that we need, from a technical standpoint, to support this struggle, not by going to take a position, but giving the legal support that every stage of the revolution requires, especially moving it from violence to peace through the courts, through arbitration, through mediation, and that will make a hell of a lot of difference. Honestly speaking, some people think that is a sign of weakness, but I don't want to lose one soul. Again, those children, who are being killed means that I'm being killed several times. Okay. And prepared to die once. Uh, Barrister, let me say this, okay? Yes. 
Um, here's where I think we are. I think that um, our struggle, just our rebellion, our human, we reacted to the way that God created us. We've, we are, we, we reacted against tyranny, against uh, uh, the killing of our of our ability to be creative. The, 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 in fact, what Americans call uh, our ability to to um, to live and pursue happiness the way we know how to. And so our people have rebelled against that. And, and once they've rebelled against that, it means they've thrown out legality, they've thrown out everything, and, and, um, and they've actually made the suppressor also pay a price. And I think that it is that price that is forcing everybody to now start wanting to come together. And I, my hope is that they can come together and the legality that you're talking about actually guide people where Ambazonia needs to be because Ambazonia does not, just like you said, need to be part of Nigeria or part of La Republic to Cameroon. And so even mentioning referendum, there should be absolutely no place for referendum because, because we have, we have, how many referendums do we have to, do we have to take? I think, I think when you have pushed people to a point where they have to pick up the gun before you even start discussing them, before you even start calling, calling international conferences and mentioning the anime, it means you've, 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 you've gone past all those niceties and all those, those things that, that civilization said, this is what you, knew, you need to improve human life. So we are at a stage where people either give us what we want or, or we, we play the spoiler game. And for those who who are part of us, but they're joining the enemy to sabotage, like you're saying, I think we need to call them out and, and, and then guide our young people and guide, and, guide, and guide the rest of the diaspora so that these con men who are acting like... Uh, it's, it's, it's funny how all of them are pastors and, 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 and uh, Tassang has carried this deacon bullshit and he's running around with uh, uh, when, when he himself is corrupt, I can tell you that Tassan was the most corrupt of the people sitting in that jail. And Tassan is worried about that corruption. Let me cut you short there. You know, you cautioned me that we should not focus on those who are distracting us. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for, for Tassan, but you're wasting useful energy. No, but I'm just calling the names that we need to clarify these things for our people so that they, they can see their role. Let me just finish, please. Let me just finish. So that they can see the way clearly because Tassang is also an embezzler of, of, of our money from Skarpak. And that's why he's associating with himself with embezzlers because, because he, he, can, he cannot find room because he knows. Internally, they know who he is. And that's why, that's why he's, he's... And so he, he, he's an enabler of evil in our community, and we need to call them out because we but, need to succeed. But, we need to succeed in this struggle. You were cautioning me. You were the one cautioning me to treat the trivialities, the irrelevance, you know, as such. Yes, I did, but we, but, but, but we went into it, and I decided to go into it. Let me finish my thoughts and focus on the real thing. I want to tell you, the real thing is not about condemning Tassang or any of those people because their conduct already is a judgment upon themselves that will eternally be cited. So you don't need to waste your breath. I say this because as far as I'm concerned, I've not met any pure society even when you went to the nun, uh, to, 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 to the uh, Reverend Sisters or the nuns, I bet you there are sinners in the majority of them but who have repented. And I can take you to the Bible. In fact, it was part of the preaching uh, th these last two days about the prodigal son, you know, and the lost sheep. Christ himself preached. He didn't come here for those who were okay. 
He came here for those who were lacking. If I, if I go to prison and I can assess that Ayokta Bear and other people, they are just stressful or whatever, I am going to look for Tarsan to make sure that I don't leave him behind. Because now our population has been so badly reduced. Every soul counts. Every soul counts. So I am pleading with you. What we need is to conscientize people to be together and to focus. There is just so much in Southern Cameroon that with the slightest effort, every Southern Cameroonian will be so comfortable. But if we quarrel, we are destined to be the wretched of the earth. Thank you, Barista. Let me, uh, in conclusion, let me say this, okay? Uh, I think you and I are going to do another show which focuses on the struggle. I think you've been very helpful in clarifying some of the facts that people are confused about. Um, I was hoping that we'll go step by step and and do other things, but but I think that the the point where this conversation went is it's an important point, and and I and I and I'm glad that uh, th there was room to just let that flow and 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 let it be where it is. I think that uh, we need to. I think I think th this conference is 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 a move forward, but I do want to caution uh, Seseko Ayok Tabe and his uh, and and the leadership that they need to focus very clearly on what is at hand and forget about the noise that is being made by rebels, because the only the only individual that all of the smaller organized Ambazonian committee elected was Seseko Ayok Tabe. Then Seseko Ayok Tabe appointed other people who then went and, and, and gathered in their own space and, and, and made themselves what they wanted to make. So, and I think that that's the picture that, that the international community is seeing. And they are saying, that is the leader of these people. Let's go talk to them. And I've heard a lot of Amber boys, a lot of uh, the fighters on the ground, a lot of the freedom fighters say that they are looking to Ayok Tabe. And, uh, but, but, but we should also know that um, there are a lot of people among us, especially in the diaspora, who, who I've come to call cultists because they are blind and, and some of what we see and, and, and even things that are happening in front of them, they totally ignore and they continue to drink the Kool-Aid. We want them to drink their Kool-Aid and die, and I did, and, but, but, but Siseko and his team should not be focusing on them. I think they focus on them too much. And I'm saying that because I read a piece by Penn Terence, I think that's the name. He spent a lot of time trying to con convince people who cannot be convinced. These people have a mission. Their livelihood is dependent on this struggle. And so they just need to do the right thing for the people of Ambazonia and, and continue. And, and so... That, that is why I'm going to conclude this by saying that those who want to free Ambazonia should just concentrate on it and leave the noise behind. Because the whole world is seeing and knowing what is right in the struggle and what is not. And I'm hoping that those who are coming together to force La Republic to stop the killing are really doing it in good faith. And if they want to come and do business with us, yes, they are better off doing business with honest people like us than, than doing business with with uh with with a colonial people because the people of the republic are still a colonial people france still dictates to them in fact right now i can say that the ambassador of of france in la republic du cameroon is the one running the place well if i mean i thought you, you know since you you initiated uh, uh the question and answer session with me if i could just chip in a concluding word absolutely might be helpful absolutely I would like, particularly the people of the Republic of Cameroon, especially the population, that they should understand that Southern Cameroonians are totally, resolutely a different people from them.
notwithstanding the interaction that we have with them. This is not about East and West Berlin. This is not about East and West Germany. Yes. But as Africans, we will always be Africans and we will interact. But when we learn ourselves to the real enemy of the Africans, to be messing up one of ours, like the Southern Cameroon, all we do is invite a curse on us. The situation now in the Republic of Cameroon is very volatile. Even for the interests of the international community and the citizens of the Republic of Cameroon, they need to hasten the restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroon so that it can provide a safe haven for regeneration of a true African democracy. Because if we allow ourselves to be raped again, then we are not worthy of asserting the identity. But I think we are worthier than that. And I especially like to invite our mothers and sisters not only to get engaged fully in the discourses towards rebuilding peace and restoring our independence, but I'm asking the youth to know that if they don't put their hands on the plow now, they will miss the help that our generation can give them. And then they will have to finish our work, clean our mess, do our own work, and do their own. And with the genetically modified food that I see them eating for the last couple of years, <laughs> they cannot handle it. So everybody should put on his thinking cap. Shame should not be part of our reflex. Let us look at truth in the eyes and say that we embrace you. I'm reiterating I, that those who fear some people because of their profile should not have any fear because Southern Cameroon as a society of equal opportunity is not going to be ruled by the feeble. It's going to be, to be ruled by the strong and capable. If people have a lot of intellectual energy they have not used, get on your computer, start designing post-conflict reconstruction projects. Not this masturbation that the Republic has appointed some two gentlemen to be, you know, uh, sullying the airwaves with. It is critically important that we know that the Amber Boys who have been engaged in self-defense, if they are not taken care of, they are not recognized the way veterans are recognized in this country and rehabilitated and reinserted in society for normal life, Southern Cameroon will be a banana cake soaked in water. Nobody can eat it because it will neither be ice cream nor cake. I beg of you, my people, As there's a lot of rain coming these days, like Celine Dion says, let the rain wash away our sins. Let the rain wash away our bitterness. Let's be one peaceful, loving people again. 
and let us get on the train like one person. In fact, nobody was born with a position. Drop them. And if you want it so bad, let us go back, recover our country, set the rules for the game, and if you compete and you get a mandate, you can fly with it. I thank you all. And I thank especially you, uh, Brother Augustine, from Foncha, the Bamunas, and so on, you have been interviewing the actors in this our revolution from the generation before us to us now and onwards. You are doing a formidable job and I continue to plead with you that you also embrace the path of peace building or you continue to embrace it because you had already embraced it. You are not a violent man, you are a gentleman. But please, the youths are listening to you. Preach your style to them. And let us harvest the, 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 the fruits of liberty that hang close to our mouth. We should stop spilling saliva when we can suck the mango. <laughs>